Hey everybody, happy Friday. Welcome back to the final conversation in this series between myself and Jared Turner. How's it going? Hey, uh, great. Great to be here again with you, Robin. Yep, so just for those of you who are here for the first time, Jared is the co-founder of Mandarin Companion, a company that makes graded reader materials for Mandarin Chinese. I highly recommend going back and checking out the sort of previous conversations in this series. We've been talking all about extensive reading. And today in this final conversation, we're gonna discuss how do you get the most out of graded reader materials? So this is a pretty big topic. Let's jump in. I wanna know all your best tips, tricks, methods, exercises, give it to me. All right, so uh, you've decided to get into extensive reading. I have. So here's everything you wanted to know about how to get the most out of your extensive, uh, your graded readers, but we're afraid to ask. Right. So, so I'm glad you did. So you want to do extensive reading. And uh, well, I've got a, a million and one activities for you, things you can do to get the most out of your graded readers. All right. Now, I, I usually try to first talk about, you know, there's some real basic things uh, of what to do for, for reading. Uh, extensive reading using your graded readers. So uh, obviously we've talked about this before in some of the other previous videos is make sure you're finding the proper materials that are at your level. Your target reading rate wants to be like a 98% level of comprehension. Right. And read, make sure you get a lot of comprehensible input. So just don't be like, you know, reading like a, a chapter a week. Let's focus on like trying to get a chapter, you know, a day, a book a week type of a thing. Make sure you get a lot of input. So yeah. considering that you're doing these things, um, here are some specific things that you can do to really maximize your gains from extensive reading and your graded readers. Okay. So one of the first things is that, hey, uh, look to see if the materials that you're looking at have audio with them. Okay. Uh, now, the research behind extensive reading and graded readers really shows that, I mean, if all you're doing is reading, your listening and your speaking and your, you know, uh, writing will improve as well. But, you know, there's a lot of things, especially if you like, for me, we're, Chinese is a tonal language. And so getting, you know, the familiar, familiarity and like really hearing that, it's, it's really important, especially if there's a lot of different pronunciations and sounds that aren't are as unique to you, or even slight differences in sounds, things that found very similar. Um, you know, getting it some, some audio along with it can really help you too. Um, so you're reading, you're seeing, you're getting the visual representation, but you're also hearing the sounds. Kids can do a lot for you. So that's super helpful. Yep. But now uh, you're doing a lot of different reading. Uh, what can you do to also leverage that? Now, when we think about this, uh, there's a lot of talk in the world about just content. So what I want you to think about now is just uh, that the graded readers and this, they're just stories, they're content. Right. And, and how you can now use that content to generate output. Okay. Because that's essentially what we now want to do. So we want to say, all right, how can you use these, uh, you know, the stories? So one of the basic ways that the concepts, I think, even to approach this, uh, and I'm once again, you know, Rob and I, you and I, we're, we're native English speakers. So I speak to that from that frame of reference. Okay. So I think of us thinking like an English literature class, you know, for me, like in high school, you know, uh, you know, you... You would, uh, the teacher would assign you a novel and then what you would do is, you know, they would read it and then you have all sorts of like classroom discussions. You'd write essays that are based off those novels. And this is exactly the same type of thing that you can do when you start using graded readers because you have a story, something that's interesting. It's something that you can do, something you can talk about. So I, I'm going to now run through a whole bunch of different types of activities that you can do to get the most out of that. Can I tell you real quick, can I tell you a super quick story right before we jump into that? Yeah, I do. I want to hear it. So a super quick story. I've mentioned this in all these conversations, but I just finished my first complete graded reader from Mandarin Companion, which was Emma or Anne Mo. And I just had a little sort of outdoor picnic breakfast with a, a friend of mine on the weekend who is from China. And uh, I told her about this and she says, in Chinese, she says, tell me about it. I wanna know what was the story about? And I gotta tell you, it was so much fun. I stumbled, I bumbled, I you know went through, but I was able to tell her all about it. And she interjected a few times. I actually just learned a phrase. Oh God, now I've got myself on the spot. It was, uh, <laughs> this, uh, uh -huh. do you know this expression? 介绍对象. 
Uh, doi xia. I'm not familiar with that. So it means to set somebody up. Oh. So I believe the way that I would use it is like, um, like Jared, wo yao gei ni jie xiao dui xia. Um, oh. like I want to set you up with somebody. Um. I think that's correct, but like that was an example of where as I was bumbling around and trying to say, well, Ammo, she likes to, to help friends find a boyfriend girlfriend situation, and she's like, oh, <laughs> she likes to set people up, right? And so she yeah, I don't want to take too shout. long in this yeah, story, cool. but just to tell you that it was really helpful, and I did find it was a great opportunity for me to actually use a lot of the words I learned in this story. And I did find a couple times. I, ah, what was that word? I saw it ten times in the story. So I, as, after that conversation, I immediately wanted to go and just like, you know, read those words again and find them. So that was just a little story on an activity that I did, uh, and I found it to be really helpful. That is fantastic because you know one of the basic things you can do is you simply just try to explain the story to someone. Right. And and now these are effective things you can do, especially if you have a tutor, if right. you have a teacher. You know, or work just a language partner even. Even it's just, hey, you know, I here's the book I read. Tell them the story. Tell them what's it about. Yeah. You know, that's it's very simple to do. Now, taking that one step further, there's an actual structure, okay, of of an activity for this. Now, this is a this is a a game, so to speak, an activity developed by Paul Nation. And Paul Nation, he's one of the foremost uh, language acquisition experts out there, or like uh, vocabulary acquisition. Experts. Yeah. So uh, what this activity is called, 432. All right. So how it works is that uh, usually you'll do this, they do this in a classroom, but you can do this one-on-one -on -one with a tutor. Um, so you, you set a timer for four minutes, all right, and then you have something you're going to tell the person. Now, this it could be about the chapter that you just read. This could be just about the story. You can pick like the main character. You can pick a, you can even do something outside of graded readers. But the main thing is you, you, you pick something that you just read. Okay. Right. And with that, you have four minutes to tell the person what, what it is you're talking about. Okay. As soon as the timer goes up, then you reset the timer now to three minutes. Ah. And you have three minutes to repeat yourself to the, the exact same thing and, and, and tell the person what it is you're, you're talking about with the book, the story, the character, whatever. Okay, after the end of three minutes, you reset the time for two minutes and you do the same thing again, but you only have two minutes to do it. So, so and what's the great thing about this activity is that there, there's a lot, they've done, a, uh, Paul Nation and his uh, colleagues have done a lot of uh, research about this specific activity, but as the time decreases and as you, know, you go into that third set, they find that your, uh, your mistakes decrease your accuracy in the language improves, and your fluid your your fluency in speaking improves, and uh, it's just overall you have a more comprehensible and concise you know output. Um, so that's a fun activity that you can do, and it just it provides you know it's kind of almost like you're rehearsing. Right? So a couple of questions. One question is: do you, is this an immediate? So as soon as you're done, you reset it and you go, or you know, can you take a second to, uh, yeah, what was that word? I, I couldn't think, what, you know, do you have any time to mm -hmm. look up the words you missed or is it just, no, go again right away? You know, I imagine there's a bunch of ways that you could do it like that. Right. Um, you know, this activity, I know, I know that specifically they've researched it in a classroom and that they have a partner and you switch partners in between and you immediately kick into the, to the, you know, the three minutes and then afterwards kick again into the two minutes. So you switch partners every time. And then afterwards, then the listeners then and the and the speakers then switch places. By the so, way, so, I, yeah, like that, a fun mm -hmm. variation. If you have a native speaker, um, they could do it. You could you could spend four minutes doing your very best to summarize it, and then maybe they could try to see if they can resummarize it uh, based on what you told them in four minutes uh, as a native speaker, and that could be a fun thing. Yeah, they see there's thing, things like that. Now, the great thing about this, once you have a topic or you have something to talk about, then you see now we have discussion. So even if you're doing this, this 432 exercise or this activity with a tutor, you can now say, all right, um, I'd like you to ask me two questions you know, about what I spoke about. Um, and, and so you, your tutor can be ready for you for questions. And now you see now we can now f further on the discussion even, even more. And so it, it, and once you have a story, you see there's so much more to talk about. For example, 
I know one of our books is, um, I, I actually have it right here is the secret garden. Okay. So the secret garden, and it's a really heartwarming story. And you might say, uh, you know, at the end, uh, Wang Zinan. So yeah, that's one of the characters. Um, he, he, uh, Si Yuan, sorry. He, he, uh, runs into his father's arms. You know, um, his father returns from this travel abroad and says, you know, how would you feel? You know, if you hadn't seen your father for a year and, you know, he showed up in the garden that you, you know, had pruned. I don't know. So there's a lot of just questions you could start asking, saying like, well, what if the father wasn't, was angry? You know, how do you think, you know, Si Yuan would have, you know, reacted instead? You know, you know, what would you have done? So you start to bring up some, it's even interesting when you start talking about some moral topics. That's what I found when you, um, in discussions, which can really spur a lot of conversation. You start talking about moral topics. Yeah, or it's uh, just opinion. Oh, everyone's got an opinion about that. Yeah, well, and so one thing I was going to mention earlier is that when I was doing my activity this weekend, so with, um, you know, my friend, and she was like, tell me about the story, I did find myself focusing a lot on the emotional side of things. Like, well, you know, she likes to do this, but she, she keeps messing it up, and it's, you know, this and that, and like, you know, and then there's this guy, and I, was, I don't like him. Uh, but I really like this person. Like, I found myself focusing on these, like, emotional con connections I have. But I also do, I do think that some of the best activities I've done in the past are the ones where you take it a step further and you say, so what's the story here? What's the message, mm -hmm. right? What, yeah. Like, because most of these stories have a message uh, or a series of them. Getting, really digging into not just what happened, but how do you feel about it? Right. That yeah. that's really powerful, I think. So, you know, like for your good example here is you read Emma. All right. So you just finished reading that one. And, uh, you know, we can start saying, well, Emma, you know, she, uh, you know, seems to be kind of butting her nose in everyone's business. You know, where do you think is the line? You know, she wants to maybe, you know, introduce people to, you know, and set people up on dates. But, you know, how involved should she be? Right. You know, Does uh, it make her a bad it, person if she has good intentions, but then ends up hurting people. There we go. So now we start talking to intentions, right? You know, should we really blame her? You know, what should she take responsibility for and what shouldn't she? Right. You know, so now we, you know, once again, it's a very rich discussion that we can have about this because, you know, we're topic talking about something that, you know, is a story that's interesting. We're now engaged with the characters. We have an idea of who these people are and, and you got an opinion. And I also think uh, that if you have the luxury of doing this with either a teacher or a tutor or a native speaker, another step further you can take it is, well, how might that differ between my native language's culture or my native country, whatever, and the culture of the, you know, the place where, we're, where this is taking place? Now, in, case, in the case of Chinese, there are several countries that speak Chinese. Of course, in the case of English, several different countries. So, but... You know, maybe I want to discuss, well, in my opinion, you know, maybe this makes Amo a bad person or whatever. I don't know. Um, but how would people view this in China? You know, uh, and that can be an interesting discussion yeah. because now you start to learn the cultural fabric of a place that speaks the language you're learning. It's a great opportunity to get a window into those deeper topics, I think. You're so true. When we have literature like this, now there's all sorts of cultural hooks you know, like that for room for discussion and say, why, you know, would they do it this way? You know, um, and, you know, in your country, you know, or in your culture, would how would have this played out? What would have been normal or acceptable? You know, we start talking about a dates, right? Um, you know, what's dating culture like in China? Um, you know, is this, this what happens? Are, wh why are there, are there any apps or websites for dating, you know, and how do people meet each other these days? You know, what's a normal first date? Things like, or like values, so, right? Like talking about values. These are, these are often some of the wonderful things to dig into, you know, what's important. Absolutely. And I, I find a lot of times in, uh, I remember when I was in Japan, we would have discuss, we would have debates, uh, and we would talk about things like, should you follow your dreams, uh, or should you take a stable job? And you can see these extremely clear divisions where we had lots of students from China. Um, and this is just, of course, very anecdotal. It's a generalization, but like almost exclusively people thought, no, you should definitely take a good job. You should create a stable life for yourself, save money. Like that's the right thing. And whereas all the Western people were like, no, who cares? Like follow your dreams. Like that's what matters. And it was interesting to see these clear divisions. So I find that values are a thing that like, they're inherently tied to the culture of the place. 
Absolutely. So anyway, though, though that's I mean, right, right here is that you see this is like an endless well of discussion. I know, right? We've only you know, discussed that I one mean, activity. We, <laughs> I mean, I basically I've talked about one point, you know, and we've had you know so much we can even just say about this. Right. It, it's just it's such a rich topic uh, that you can just spend. We're just talking just about literature, motivations, you know, intentions, what you think is going to happen. But I'll, I'll run through a few more here. Yeah. Um, you know, one, uh, one, this is sometimes a bit of a classroom environment, but I, I like this as you do a, like a press conference. Now you could, you could even have your tutor. Okay. It says, she's going to pretend like, you know, you finished a book and it is best. The other person also needs to have read the book or, and know the story as well. But then they, they pretend like, you know, whatever, just fan and finish what happened. Like one of our books is the, the country of the blind and he just escapes that country of the blind. And so now he gets back to, um, society civilization and there's a press conference hey tell us about what happened you know and they have all sorts of you know uh questions so you can kind of pretend you're that person and and, you know and and, you know have him interviewed so that's a fun activity um one thing also is that you know is working with a language partner someone is that you know 20 questions you pretend you're someone in the book or even it could be an object in the book right and they just ask a they can ask you yes or no questions to try to narrow it down of who you are or what you are in the book. Yeah. Uh, simply now also just s- something as simple as just trying to predict the story. What do you think is going to happen next? W- w- you know, what should this person do? What's going to be getting talking them like val- values-based questions or moral-, moral questions? You know, this can be very uh, rich discussions. For, That'd be uh, great for, for if, if you have a weekly session with a tutor, maybe you go away, read one chapter, um, you know, whatever it is, and you come back and discuss what's going to happen next. Just like a TV show where it's like, on the next episode, and then everyone... That's yep, the yep. fun part, is like, all the theories about what's going to happen next, you know? Absolutely. So, you know, and that's, it's fantastic. So these, these are great things to do with someone else who is committed to learning that language with you. Obviously, a tutor teacher is, is wonderful. But, you know, there, and so there, the topics of discussion, there's a whole lot of ways to do it and to go about it. Uh, but what I also love is uh, for extensive reading and using graded readers is that you can get so many writing opportunities. So, you know, one of the, this also can work out well with, um, uh, you know, a teacher or something, but simply, uh, simply doing something like finding adjectives. You know, pull out five adjectives that you're finding in the in the thing, and just use it in a sentence. Right. Uh, now you can do that spoken and written. You can do that with nouns. Uh, you can do it with adverb. There's all sorts of the different grammar. You know, things of grammar. You can just do something that simple. Right. Now, one of the most powerful activities, and this is one of my uh, de facto uh, favorite activities, especially where I've worked in uh, in in dual immersion schools and in Chinese classes with students. I've helped teachers with this. Um, is simply when you come to the end of a book, there's kind of three activities. They're all the same type of thing, but slightly different slant. And uh, one of it is, is simply it involves uh, like rewriting the ending, ah. rewrite the end of the book. OK, and this is not I mean, you may think, oh, I don't know if I can do this. Well, if you've got a graded reader and it's properly leveled, the, the, the language you've been reading is already accessible to you. So it, and it's, it should be at your comprehensible level. So if you're going to rewrite the ending you already have a whole bunch of stuff that you can lean on to use as material to rewrite that ending. And you may have some new keywords and things you need to look up. That's great. And it can be very engaging because now you've enjoyed the story. You've been engaged with the story. Now you can rewrite the ending. How do you think it should have ended? Some other way, you know, this is, you know, like those uh, YouTube videos where it's like, you know, how it should have ended, you know, yep. the, uh, with the Harry, not Game of Thrones. Yeah. yeah. You know, like Game of Thrones or what I always like is is the uh, Lord of the Rings, you know, oh, I've got an idea and flies the eagles over Mount Doom, drops the, you know, the, the coin in Mount Doom. So uh, the, the ring and coin Doom, uh, Mount Doom. So anyway, so like rewrite the ending. But but there's also the it's cousins, which is simply write an additional chapter to the book. So that's great. So don't let the story end. Write Where another are they chapter. now? Ten years later. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> or... Pick uh, another character in the story and write a side story. Yeah, so, yeah. Write rather yeah. parallel, right? Something so it could be a minor character, uh, a, a semi, you know, supporting cast, something like that, and write another story that kind of branches off. So it's like a, 
like the story of uh, Ro- Rosencrantz and Guildenstein are dead. You know, if you've read, seen that. Anyway, right. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a great thing to do is write another perspective, uh, write the perspective of a different character on the same chapter. Right. So, yeah. you yeah. know, where maybe one person, you know, goes on a first date and it, it it's, you know, maybe it doesn't go well. And they're like, I got to figure out a way to let this person down easy. Well, flip it. Like, what was that experience like for the other person? Um, you know, and just tell that story. Yeah, see, there are a whole lot of things to do, you know, when we get into like writing, and you know, there, like I said, we, we there, there's, and within just these few things I've mentioned, really, there are so many variations within that, um, and this is something I'm actually currently doing. I'm, I'm writing a guide for extensive reading in Chinese uh, for Chinese teachers, and you know, one of the things we've been doing is we've been collecting activities right. that you can use specifically uh, for you know, graded readers, uh, how to help get the most out of your graded readers and out of extensive reading. Because there's the bottom line about this is that, you know, and what I've seen tutors and teachers doing is that you can take that textbook and you can throw it out and you can replace it with a graded reader. And, and if you want to like, and this is how I work with teachers, I say, if you want to maximize, uh, get the most out of these things is that, you have you can read in class or we have students read on their own. And this is different because a lot of the people, everyone listening to this is, you know, like usually independent learners. Right. So read. And then when you're having uh, your tutor time or language exchange, don't spend that time going over a lesson. Talk about your book. OK. And, and these these activities are different things, like even if these writing activities read, write about it, doing one of these activities, submit it to your tutor or your teacher. And then when you have your session, you have something to talk about and something to review, something to learn from. And a lot of times this can be highly relevant to you. You're now essentially creating some of your own materials that are your own level. And, and, you know, and you're just, you're maximizing your gains, you know, from, from your, your efforts. Yeah. Excellent. Well, let's wrap this up. I think one last variation on what I wanted to quickly mention that I just thought about is, um, telling a similar story uh, from your own life. Because uh, I do think that that's one thing that, you know, end of the day, many of the conversations we're going to have. And I think especially as you start making friends in a new language and you start really catching your stride, a lot of times those are the conversations you're going to have. You're going to be talking to people about your life versus their life. They're going to be sharing their experiences. You're going to be sharing yours. And so this is a great way to get practice for that is how can you relate a personal story of yours to something that happened in a, a book that you read? Because um, I do really believe that, you know, a lot of times that those are the conversations you have. And they're some of the best, most special moments, I think, when learning a language. is just opening up to a, a native speaker um, and having that bonding moment where you're just sharing. So, but there we go. That's where connection happens and it's powerful. It is. All right. Well, that was so great. Jared, thank you so much for coming You know, on the channel. This has been a lot of time uh, that you've given me and my audience, but it's been so valuable. So just thanks so much for being here. Um, yeah. Glad I could be here. Thanks so much for having me on. I appreciate it.